do I think LEGO should have made this set? No. Does that make it a bad LEGO set? Also no. The Little Mermaid Royal Clamshell is another LEGO Disney 100 release and from the looks of it, LEGO isn't stopping anytime soon. While I was really impressed with the castle or that gift with purchase set that apparently sold out hours after its release, this set in particular hasn't gotten me that excited to be honest. As opposed to being based off of the animated movie most of us know and love, is instead tied in with the live action release from a few months ago. With that, as opposed to getting remakes of the classic characters, we obviously got the ones based off of the new movie, five exclusive minifigures that LEGO actually went above and beyond to produce. The female mermaids make use of the tail element first seen in an Harry Potter set from earlier this year, but with a tremendous amount of detail on the prints. The tips in the back are printed with a different color than that of the tail, and while Indira's tail has extra prints just on the front section, Karina and Ariel's on the other hand have prints all the way from the waist to the tip of the tails with different shades of metallic colors. All of them have printed torsos front and back that to me aren't technically as impressive as the tails and all three of them have alternate face prints as well. King Triton minifigure is equally impressive if not more. The tail element was used before for things like the mermaid Batman. Um, yeah. Even I wasn't aware that that was a thing. Metallic gold and silver prints, same as the torso and arm prints. The head, however, is very freaky. The face is printed on this weak element of sorts, but taking it out reveals a plain colored minifigure head. So yeah, Lego nightmare fuel. Ursula isn't as impressive for me, though it's great to see the tentacles element coming back. The exact same one used on the Ursula minifigure from the first Disney collectible minifigure series, with prints the old version didn't have and alternate face prints as well. So even though I would personally have preferred to have had remakes of the classic minifigures, understanding the ties with the live action release, this minifigure lineup is way above the average than most releases with a level of detail and technical production challenges, so kudos to LEGO. The main build is an equally impressive model, though it's a made up concept that isn't that appealing to me personally as the display product it's meant to be. It has three distinct areas, with the first being the throne rock, which has a few seats to display some of the minifigures of the set. All of the seaweed elements and different colored plants and flowers help giving this scene the underwater vibes. I gotta highlight these transparent slopes that also help, and the fish stuck to the main build with trans clear Azoka lightsaber blades. Though simple looking, the build was surprisingly complex, with lots of great studs not on top deck techniques, which the set does offer a lot of. The second area is Ariel's treasure hideout, where the remnants of a shipwreck can be seen. On top of that, there's a collection of items, out of which I love seeing the slightly rare hourglass element, the dingle hopper that Ariel uses to brush her hair in the animated movie, a lost sword next to Sebastian, a plain old Lego crab element, and Flounder, a far better detailed character. The third area is Ursula's lair with a darker color scheme when compared to the previous sections. In the back wall of the cave there's some shelves with a few different items for her to make her poisons and potions, and at the front there's this transparent red assembly that I cannot reference exactly what it is. All of these areas and details are built onto this massive Lego clamshell model, that I gotta say was actually really impressive to put together. Lots of angles and curves trying to flow together seamlessly, and although the end result result isn't perfect due to a bunch of gaps being able to be seen here at the ends of the curved sections, I can't really think of better ways to achieve the expected result. But I'll say it again, looking at the building experience alone, this set was very challenging and enjoyable to put together. It's meant as a display model and as such, not a lot of care was taken into designing the back of the model, which I've seen some people complaining about online, but I'm taking the designer's side here. This will be a against a wall most of the time, so there really wasn't the need to complete the back, at the cost of raising the price of the set tremendously, which by the way is another unexpected surprise. Disney IP, no stickers, 5 exclusive minifigures and 1800 pieces would make this set a $200 price point really easy, right? Even more than that. Well, it's $160. Talk about a great deal. If nothing else, it's a super decent price for the pieces alone. Rare 
colors with a bunch of light blue on the throne rock, a few wedges in aqua and this shade of blue down the bottom, not to mention all of the white bricks, slopes, arch elements and more that this set has a ton of. I personally don't love the set, but there's too many great things going on in here to completely disregard it. Pitting this against a villain icon set that I wasn't that crazy about either, I might actually enjoy this one better. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.